Today we are going to study about the mechanical equivalence of heat. Now in the last video we discussed uh, what is internal energy and what is heat and we saw that the units for heat are joules and besides joules we use calories and kilocalories and we said that one calorie is equal to 4.186 joules but we didn't explain why and how scientists came to that um, to that uh, derivation. Now the mechanical equivalence of heat is a concept that was discovered by James Joule in the 19th century and first of all let's do an experiment so let's raise this now let's say that we have a body that, uh, that is moved on a rough surface so we have uh, so friction is in play and here the body has a certain kinetic energy so as uh, the body uh, moves on the surface the kinetic energy decreases as a result of friction now uh, according to to the laws of physics we know that energy cannot disappear into nothing so James Joules uh, discovered that basically energy transforms from one type into another now here due to uh, friction we have a transformation of kinetic energy or mechanical energy if you're taking the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy so mechanical energy is transformed into internal energy and as a result the temperature of this block here and also on the surface rises so basically we can conclude that there is no conservation of energy if uh, non-conservative forces are present in this case we have friction which is a non-conservative force and uh, which transforms mechanical energy into internal energy okay now let's take an example here we have a scrap piece of wood we have a nail and a hammer and we're using the hammer to uh, to put to put this nail into the uh, into the scrap piece of wood. Now, in this case, the hammer has a certain um, mechanical energy, and that, and as we hammer the nail, that mechanical energy is turned into internal energy of the nail, and as a result, the nail gets warmer um, each time we we hit it with the hammer. But also, here energy is dissipated. If we take the nail and this piece of wood as a non-isolated system also energy dissipa is dissipated uh, through sound waves so we can say that there is a change in the internal energy of this system since, inter since the internal energy of, of this system of the wood and the nail increases now that's as a result of the work that's uh, being done by the hammer on the system of nail and wood plus plus the uh, wave energy just dissipated each time the nail is hit by the hammer okay now you will see an experiment that was done by James Jules and according to this experiment he uh, he got the re the relation between uh, mechanical energy and and internal energy. Now uh, let's say that we have a a container of some sorts that's filled with water, and here we have a paddle that rotates. And here we have pulleys, and on those pulleys we have ropes with masses M. Now when these masses are released, they will cause for this rotor to spin, and as a result the paddle will spin, and as it spins it will heat up the water. Now here, uh, since we have masses that are hanging 
we have potential energy in play. So the sum of the potential energies of these two masses is 2m times g times h. Now, if this container is isolated, meaning that uh, no heat is passed into the environment, and let's say we neglect also the heat that dissipated um, from this rotor, we can say that all the potential energy is converted into uh, kinetic energy when this rotor spins, and that energy or part of it is converted into the internal energy of the water inside the container. Now, the Jules discovered that there is a relation that the decrease in, in mechanical energy of the rotor is proportional to, to the sum of the um, to the sum of the amount of temperature that the water increases and also the mass of the water. And later he found out that the proportionality constant is equal to 4.186 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. So we can say that in order to heat up one gram of water and to heat it one degree Celsius we need 4.186 joules of energy. Now, the interesting thing is that in order to be more precise, instead of saying that uh, one, one calorie is equal to uh, the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one degree of, of one gram of water by one degree, we say that one calorie is the amount of energy that's needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water. So one gram of water from 14.5 degrees Celsius to 15.5 degrees Celsius. Now this is a more correct definition since uh, as scientists later found out that there is a dependency of the energy needed to raise the temperature of water uh, based on the initial temperature. So this is a more correct definition, but so today we studied about the mechanical equivalence of heat, but a more uh, accurate um, a more accurate name would be uh, the equivalence between mechanical energy and internal energy. But for historical reasons, we we say that this is basically the mechanical equivalence of heat. In the next video, we're going to solve. A problem using this principle and then we're going to continue uh, studying about the first law of thermodynamics.